With the recent explosion in popularity of series like The Mandala Catalog and The Walton Files, the analog horror genre was shot into the spotlight. Although both of these series, as well as others known for building the foundation of this relatively new horror genre is usually held in high regards, some similarities bordering cliches can be seen in all of them. And that gave me an idea. What if I wrote a program that would automatically apply all the necessary analog horror cliches onto any selection of clips I wanted and turn them into an analog horror video with an actual story with near zero user input? Well, that sounds like a great idea with some great potential, but the code is not going to write itself. So let us begin, shall we? I hope that overdramatic intro was captivating enough because it is against my nature to do something that is even conceptually cool for more than 30 seconds, so I'm gonna be going back to my good old goofy self now. Well, anyways, let's talk about the project now. First things first, the code needs to make the video look like it was filmed on very old hardware. So it loads the video, crops them into a square, messes up with the colors and changes the frame rate to 18. After all of that, it still somehow looks better than the average laptop camera. I just don't understand why gaming laptops get so much hate, you know? You know the... Although I was expecting the frame rate to be annoying, honestly, it does wonders for the feel of the video. The second thing in our list is to make the videos glitch. Not a single piece of footage is safe from glitches in the universe of analog horror. Whoever is making those cameras, they are really chipping out on the material. Unlike real electronic manufacturers, they would never do that. Contrary to how I may make it seem, editing videos using code is not easy. So I'll just settle for using frame skips and freezing certain regions of the video for the glitches. The next thing in our list is to make this feel more analog horror-y. Because as it stands, this is more of a found footage than an analog horror video. So I added a lot of code that was way too hard to implement that does a lot of analog horror shenanigans. I really don't want to spoil everything because I'm going to be showing you the result video in the end, but to give an example, it scans for faces in the video and grabs one, distorts it, sometimes even animates it, and places weird text over it, which I'm going to be getting to later in the video, and then places it between various scenes. There's also a very big issue here. One of, if not the biggest pool of analog horror is the ambiguous and complicated lore. However, as it stands, our video doesn't really have a story. So we need to fix that. To solve this complicated problem, I came up with possibly the worst solution anyone could. Introducing, drumroll please, lore. Txt. This file lets us write things such as dates, character names, places, and even conversations. The program turns this lore.txt file into its own scene and inserts it between the normal found footage type clips. I totally did not steal the entire layout from the Mandela catalog. I am unfortunately unable to find anything scary after I made the incredible choice of going through Amnesia, The Dark Descent when I was 7 Gives me connections. and probably scarred myself for life. But as far as looks go, I think this looks pretty good. One last thing we need to do with the video remains. The climax. I, I should have probably picked a better word. Essentially what I want to do is make the last about 30-ish seconds of the video feel way more tense than the rest of it. So to achieve that I just wrote some code again and essentially went the cliche way of just switching colors, like certain colors making the video more red, and then just doing a lot of things on screen, like a lot of filters at the same time so it's barely visible and understandable. That is totally not gonna disorient anyone. I've already added a lot of things to this program and even some that I haven't told you yet and you're gonna be seeing in the results, but I would have done more if there wasn't this huge roadblock in the way. You see, what I'm doing here is not like using an editing program. Whenever I change something in the code, I can't see a preview of what is going to happen. The code needs to load, process, edit, and render the entire video before I can see a single frame of change, which usually takes like several minutes on my M1. There are ways to make this much, much faster, yes. However, 
Actually, yeah, I have no argument, I was just being lazy. Now, as good, or in this case as uncomfy as a piece of footage looks, it is nothing without some good audio accompanying it. I added a new part into the code that extracts the audio from the video, lowers the quality, essentially applies a lot of filters I don't even know the names of properly, to make it sound like it was recorded using a mic that just washed ashore. Looks easy enough, yes, but this may be the dirtiest code I've ever written. I don't really want to go into the details because honestly, they're just very boring, but just know that this program is like a Jenga tower that is one pull away from crumbling down. Well, let's just see if this thing works before I go record the actual videos I'm gonna give this software to process. There goes my analogy. Apparently, changing your audio kilohertz and frame rate of the video constantly through the program messes up with the saving process. Connections. I spent an entire agonizing day trying to find what was causing the issue, but in the end, I was able to get it done. And our code is officially up and running, and you know what? I think it works pretty well, and I don't say that a lot about my own projects. So it's finally time for me to go out and actually record the videos that I'm going to be giving to this program for it to process and, well, create our video. I would use the candle transition again, but honestly, my lighter is out of lighter fluid, so I think I'm just going to settle with the lights for now. Anyways, lights off. Yes, I used the same transition twice. Sue me. Hi, I'm in the dimension known as the outside, and I somehow managed to convince one of my friends to hold the camera. I don't know how I did that, but I somehow did it. I was outside, yes, however, there was one small issue. I was alone. It was proving kinda hard to arrange a lot of people to come there just to shoot this weird video. So instead, I just sent my friends the script and wanted them to voice some lines. So I'm just gonna add the lines that they voiced in post before running the code. Okay. Enough talking, I'm just gonna go record the scenes now, and I'm gonna be showing you the versions with the audio edited in so you can see what the code does more clearly. So, let's go. Hey, uh, speaking of actually, oh. what happened to him? How did you mention it actually? I, I don't think I ever heard from him since then. I, honestly, I kinda forgot about him. I didn't until then, but everything just felt so real. I don't know how to explain it honestly. You don't believe me, do you? That cruel joke invited me to dinner. You're kidding. After recording all of that, I gave all the footage to the code, and this is what it came up with. Do you really have to record all of this? Well, the camera search should probably have some footage on it too. Just can't keep pointing at our faces the whole day. Okay, fair point. I'm just standing there, and so does a huge we just all the crows. He's just staring right into this flashlight, and while well, I'm just staring back at him, and then for a second, there's silence, and then, and then I just book it. I don't think I ever ran that fast before. Hey, uh, speaking of actually, oh. what happened to him? How did you mention it, actually? I, I don't think I ever heard from him since then. I, honestly, I kind of forgot about him. It can still be just a cruel joke. That cruel joke invited me to dinner. You're kidding. Call me surprised. I could have sworn I saw something, you know? Didn't know you believed in that stuff. I didn't until then, but everything just felt so real. I don't know how to explain it, honestly. You don't believe me, do you? It's not that I don't. It's just that you told me something happened and that's it. How about you tell me the story first, and then I'll figure out if I believe you or not. You know that one gazebo in the park, right? The one with the flower bed next to it?
this is just a bunch of old things. I, I really think we're wasting our time here. At the end of the day, although what it created was not spectacular, I feel like it captured the basic essence of analog horror to a certain degree, although it seemed more like a parody or a very cheap student project. Yeah, that's it for today. See ya!